Betafish are famous for being fierce fighters because of their territorial nature, but did you know they can be kept with other fish? Keep watching as I count down the most popular tank mates submitted by you, my viewers. Hi, I'm a gamer's wife here with practical tips to help busy aquarists like you. And I remember the life-changing moment when I realized that betta fish could be kept with other creatures. And that's when I went to my local fish store and I saw that they put a single betta fish in each one of their tanks that had peaceful community fish in it. Pretty cool, right? Well, betta fish are still pretty aggressive creatures, so how can you tell what fish are going to make good versus bad tank mates so that you don't get Armageddon in your aquarium? So here are my rough guidelines with what animals should play nice with your betta fish and vice versa. Number one, don't put bettas with bettas. So you don't want a male with a male, a male with a female, or even a female with a female. Not that I've tried an all-female betta sorority before, but I've heard plenty of horror stories from other people where it was going fine for months and all of a sudden they come home to a bloodbath. Not worth it to me. So rule number two is you don't want to put your betta fish with anything too aggressive. And so what I mean by that is no fin nippers like tiger barbs or maybe pea puffers. You don't want to put them with anything too fast or food aggressive. So like a zebra danio, they're definitely going to be super fast and gobble everything up before your betta fish might ever get a bite. And then no aggressive bullies in general like dwarf garamis, which are pretty similar to betta fish. And uh, I once had a flame dwarf garami who just non-stop harassed my albino quarry catfish. What a jerk. So when I say dwarf garamis, I don't necessarily mean that there's a common, um, I guess, adage that you can't put any other surface dwelling fish with betta fish because they're on the same level and the betta fish will feel territorial. I haven't actually had that experience. I've had good luck with um, more peaceful grommies like honey grommies, forcata rainbow fish, and other top dwelling fish. Guideline number three is don't put your betta fish with anything too big. So in the fish world, if fish A is can fit into the mouth of fish B, most likely he's going to get eaten. So you don't want to put your betta fish with like an Oscar or a turtle or even goldfish. Speaking of goldfish, guideline number four is that you should house your betta with other fish that enjoy similar water conditions. So in the goldfish case, they probably enjoy cooler waters than a betta would versus maybe something like a German blue ram would want hotter water than a betta fish. So in general, your betta fish can be kept with any kind of tank mate that is peaceful, non-fin nipping, a community fish that's somewhat small in size and lives in similar water conditions. With the obvious caveat that every betta fish's personality is different, so take note of that. And then also I found that the bigger the tank, the better. So if you put your betta fish in a five gallon tank, he might attack all his tank mates uh, because he feels like he has to protect his territory. Versus if you put that same betta in a bigger 20 gallon tank, he might be totally chill and get along with everyone. All right, now that we've covered the basic rules, let's reveal our top seven most popular betta tank mates, which was voted by you guys. So thank you so much to the 92 people who responded to my community post. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I make a community post. Starting with the least to most popular tank mates, we've got category number four, live bears. And 16 of you voted that, yes, fancy guppies can be kept with betta fish. What? I was really surprised by that because I've always heard that, quote, fancy guppies look too much like betta fish with their long, colorful tails and will be definitely attacked by them. So you guys swear that it works and even said that a pro is the betta fish will help keep the population down by eating some of the fries so it sounds like a win-win situation category number three is invertebrates and 22 of you say that snails are a must-have for any betta tank because they keep the aquarium clean of excess food and uh, algae however dwarf shrimp were also suggested but about 16 of you were like yeah totally go for it as long as you have plenty of plants and cover while six of you were mm, no way Jose about it, saying yes, my betta fish definitely attacks shrimp, especially the baby shrimp. I've seen it both ways. When my betta fish sound wave was young and spry in a smaller five gallon tank, he definitely attacked any cherry shrimp, a mono shrimp that he encountered. But once he got older and mellower and I moved him to a 10 and then 20 gallon tank, he didn't really pay attention to the shrimp at all and actually was more interested in stealing their food. 
The second most popular category was schooling or shoaling nanofish. They're really great because they're usually much faster than your betta is, and then because they hang out in a large group, it's hard for them to single one out. A whopping 27 of you picked tetras as your favorite schooling fish, with over half of you specifically saying neon tetras, or similar other types like cardinal and green neon tetras. I think at a very distant second place was harlequin resporas, and then I don't want to forget to mention that three of you did mention that neon tetras might fin nip a little bit, but in general they seem to be a very popular and affordable favorite for most betta keepers. And the most popular category is bottom dwellers and algae eaters. Yay! I think that totally makes sense because cleanup crews are always much appreciated and then the bottom dwellers will tend to stay out of the way of your top dwelling betta fish. 11 of you said that autosynchless catfish were your favorites probably because they're so peaceful and great at eating algae while 14 of you really like coolie loaches. They're nocturnal and tend to be a little shy so they mostly come out to feed at night when your betta fish is asleep. No conflict there. But the strongest contender that wins the title of best betta fish tank mate, coming in with an overwhelming 34 votes, which means one out of three of you recommended this fish, is, you guessed it, Cory Catfish. And yeah, it might seem a little unfair because there are so many different varieties of Cory Doors, but I think it totally makes sense because they're so peaceful and derpy and fun loving. They're not going to fin nip and they're not going to be food aggressive. You're just going to mostly find them scavenging around the bottom of your aquarium, cleaning up any leftovers. And then because they are bottom dwellers and your betta fish is swimming more at the top, it's really visually pleasing for your aquarium. So I totally agree why they made it to the top of the list as everyone's favorite tank mate. If you want to take your betta fish care to the next level, make sure to check out this playlist over here that I've put together for you. In my next release, I'll probably be doing a 2019 version of Meet All My Pets that summarizes all the changes I made to my aquariums this year and what plans I have going on for 2020. So don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss it. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.